everyone. Welcome to MarshStream, your performance broadcast platform. I'm Stephanie Wiseman, Artistic Director and Founder of The Marsh and Marsh Stream. And thank you for joining us tonight for Solo Arts Heal, featuring Hai Ting Chin performing excerpts and an interview. And her excerpts are for her science fair and opera with experiments. Please consider supporting Marsh Stream and its artists with a tax deductible donation to our tip jar or join our membership program. Tonight's tips are matched and you can subscribe to the Marsh's YouTube ch channel and be notified when our shows go live. You can see all our archive shows at themarsh.org. Let's give a great big welcome to Gail Shickley, the brilliant host of Solo Arts Heal. Hello, Gail. I can't think of a better way to celebrate a return to science-mindedness than with Hai Ting's love song to science. In recent years, many U.S.-based climate scientists shifted their research to outside the country as they worried about climate deniers impacting their ability to finance and advance their work focused on a range of extreme risks to humans from climate change. Research that can inform policymakers planning for worsening wildfires and floods by which we're all impacted. So today, Solar Arts Heal celebrates science and the arts with Science Fair. Solar Arts Heal began as a collective of solo artists sharing the theme of the healing power of the arts. To this, we remain dedicated with terrific storytelling as survivors and caregivers of a variety of physical and mental challenges, offering performance and informants on health and wellness related issues to our communities. And that includes the health crisis of climate change. Here presenting Science Fair, we come together with an understanding that science and dedicated work will help us heal our mother earth. Solutions and a green economy are at hand as Solo Arts Heal embraces the power of community, environmental and social justice, and the healing power of the arts. Let me tell you about our featured guest tonight. American mezzo-soprano Hai Ting Chin performs in a wide range of styles and venues from Purcell to Pierre Lunaire Carabino to the King and I, from J.S. Bach to P.D.Q. Bach, disclosure, we're related to one of these people. She has performed with New York City Opera, the Wooster Group, Philip Glass, Robert Wilson, Opera Omnia, American Symphony Orchestra, and on the stages of Carnegie Hall, the Mann Center in Philadelphia, and London's West End, and at festivals worldwide. She holds degrees from Eastman and Yale Schools of Music and is a native Northern California, currently residing in New York City. As an artist in residence at HERE Art Center in New York, Hai Ting created and performed Science Fair, an opera with experiments, a as a staged solo show and musical celebration of science, excerpts from which we will enjoy tonight. So as I welcome Hai Ting, we are going to begin um, the first of four video uh, segments that we're going to have enjoyed tonight. And this first one will um, explain quite a lot. So it's a couple of minutes. It's called Natural Phenomena and uh, with music by Rene Favonsi. So with that, Kristen, our producer, I believe will run the first piece. Thank <laughs> 
Wonderful, beautiful. Hi, Ting. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Can we hear Hello. you? Hello. <laughs> uh, you have the best mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what a incredibly beautiful setup. I, I must say I did have the opportunity to see the show live at here in New York. And um, I'm just so excited to have you here tonight. Uh, Thank so you tell for us having a little me. Bit about, I'm so delighted to be here. Tell us a little bit about how this came about. Science Fair came about, honestly, because I was spending so much time as a classical singer uh, celebrating things that were not necessarily my worldview and uh, I think I that that's basically a euphemism for um, working for religion quite a lot I I get paid to do a lot of singing in churches and synagogues and while I have nothing in particular against that it is not those I, I don't share those beliefs and I felt like I wanted to use the power of classical singing, which is so often, so often generates a feeling of, as you mentioned earlier, awe and wonder and a, a joy in the numinous, the, the, um, that which is somehow, some people say is spiritual, but I, I wouldn't even say that, just the, the glorious in the world. Um, the classical voice is so often used in service of those feelings and I ha have for most of my life felt that the workings and the findings of science are beautiful, wondrous, awesome, and I wanted to create a show that celebrated that. And also that had a good dose of humor because there's no better way to make difficult concepts accessible than to laugh at them. So if you can laugh at them and sing about them, then that seems like a pretty good celebration to me. And thus was born Science Fair. And I commissioned um, uh, some of my favorite composers, including Renee Favancy, who's with us today, to uh, write songs for myself and pianist Erica Switzer, who um, I feel I have not given enough credit to. She was my partner in crime in that video at the piano playing so beautifully. Uh, so I commissioned four composers and I talked to a whole lot of scientists and um, listened to a whole lot of podcasts and read a whole lot of papers and, and picked out things that lent themselves well to becoming musical. And, and we made Science Fair. Wonderful. I see that last piece with lyrics by Marie Curie. Yes, indeed. That's a, that's a fairly famous quote of hers that kind of sums it up. Mm, beautiful. And, um, and all the lyrics are created from the words of scientists and teachers um, performed as songs with live experiments throughout the show. Yes. Um, let, with this we're going to see uh, the next piece called Our Solar System, again with music by Renee Favancy, and she is here with us. Um, let me tell the audience a bit about her so we can also uh, have her join our conversation and set that up. Um, Renee Favancy is a composer and soprano living in Portland, Oregon. Her works explore the music of words, natural and made environments, emotions and spiritual questions. These investigations yield vocal music of all stripes, music concrete-esque electronic pieces and lyrically driven instrumental music cultivating relationships that unfold in the spaces between voices. Recent commissions include works for Trio uh, Triumphatrix, Northwest Art Song, Portland Piano International, Fear No Music, Hai Ting Chin, Resonance Ensemble, and Five Boroughs Music Festival. She holds a um, both a uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in composition from Eastman and Yale, respectively, and is currently teaches music composition and theory at Portland State University and Creative Musicians Retreat in New England. Welcome, Renee. Thank you, Gail. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. And um, so do tell us um, 
about your in, your involvement here and 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 let us uh, know about this next piece that we're going to be seeing. Yes, yeah, so Hai Ting and I have been friends for many years and co-collaborators. Um, she has inspired me so much um, to take really uh, interesting creative turns. And I think one of her brilliant, um, part of her brilliance in science fair was knowing just the text to give to each composer. So she gave me the ones that really inspired me the most. Um, one thing that I really like to do in setting a text is to try and embody something of the poetic image in musical texture and uh, natural phenomena was a perfect invitation for this approach uh, as it describes the vast cloud of gas and dust that was there before the formation of the solar okay, system. You just you just said natural phenomena, but now you're talking oh, about I the meant, next I'm, one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, our solar system. Oh, I want to tell a funny thing. When we were talking about uh, early stages, talking about this piece, we were uh, thinking about the Marie Curie quote and thinking of different choices of words for uh, which ended up being dazzling, but we were thinking what words could convey wonder, uh, supreme delight and I remember that's right because the original face. the original yeah, is in French. French and we translated it yeah yeah and so I first started working on it I had a little square of paper with Hai Ting's writing the, the translation and I remember your face Hai Ting when you came up with dazzle and it was it was <laughs> the perfect word <laughs> oh that's wonderful uh, <laughs> I remember that story you had written it I think in some notes yeah, and it was it was written simply, and I think that um, speaks to the the text uh, perfectly. Um, so our solar system has all kinds of really vivid imagery from the from the gas cloud uh, to after nuclear fusion, the clarity of the structure of the solar system. Um, so if there's anything I want to say about the music is that it. it it tries to embody that those images texturally so that th there's all kinds of intellectual rigor behind how all of those things are made but my intention is that you know through feeling it's felt knowledge which is something i think music offers beautifully um so we we feel the gaseousness the cloudiness of the cloud through through a sort of a cluster of textures uh, a cluster of pitches that with lots of pedal and sort of ringing sound. And then after nuclear fusion, my desire is that it's an absolute clarity. And so we have the simplicity of short repetitive figures or ostinati uh, and simple pitch language uh, that then sort of connotes this, this brightness and this clarity. Um, and one fun geeky thing was I was thinking about how to how to um, create this texture that shows the solar system. I was actually looking at a model that shows the planets and their rotational paths and their, their speed of rotation and spinning. And uh, I noticed that Mercury moves about four times as fast as Jupiter. And, uh, about, and so the rate of motion of these little short repeating figures uh, is determined, the speed of them shows what, uh, what planet it is. So Mercury is high pitched and fast, Jupiter is about medium pitch and mediums and Neptune is low pitched and slow. So as you're listening it, hopefully you have this feeling of, uh, of the, the mass and the speed at which these planets are moving. Uh, and music was a perfect vehicle to, to share that. Oh, that's fantastic. It's so wonderful to hear how this was composed and put together and, and um, how much the music just lends to the entire idea of all. Uh, I think we should probably play it after that fantastic explanation. Let's do it. Number two, the second piece, our solar system.
Fabulous. Thank you. That was wonderful. Are we all here? Um, Hi, Gail. I'm here. Is there any any uh, thing you want to say about that uh, piece more than we've already heard? I just want to thank Renee for writing me that amazing piece. Beautiful. <clears throat> it's always a pleasure to sing. And um, and you there uh, now. Pardon me, but Renee is among you. Had four composers. Yes, um, Renee Favond and Matthew Shickley, who uh, you may or may not be related to. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> definitely and, am. Very happily. <laughs> and. Um, Stefan Weissman, who uh, Stephanie was just pointing out in the chat, has almost exactly her name. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and Conrad Cummings. Wonderful. Yes, uh, Stephanie herself is a, a, a composer and very interested in opera and has oh. um, worked in that arena. So you have uh, something in common there. Um, so... Uh, I want to, um, th there's a lot to talk about here, and I want to just take a moment to remind the audience that posted in the chat is a link to the tip jar, and your tax-deductible support is indeed needed and much appreciated to keep the Marsh Dream platform open to our communities during this time of isolation and theater closure. Also, we encourage comments and questions from the audience. Our producers will help us keep an eye on that, so don't hold back. The chat is open now. And even if you are on the YouTube platform, you can um, post there and we'll um, magically get it be, uh, from our wonderful producers. Um, so, uh, Hai Ting, this, the fully staged theatrical presentation presents the lyrics of, of well-known scientists and writers. Um, and you have, I believe, an astronomer, a chemist, a particle physicist, a Pulitzer Prize winning science writer, and a middle school science teacher. And one of the things I know that we're not going to see tonight is um, extracting DNA from a strawberry. Yes, indeed. I, I, I did that uh, every night of the show um, with the help of a, an audience volunteer, sometimes a very enthusiastic young child who was in the front. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it, the song is sort of half cooking show, half science lesson. That's a, among the things that we did on stage. And as great as this is for uh, children, it really is a show for adults. It, it's a show for, for all ages, but as an opera, a beautiful uh, love song is, is, is said to, to science for adults. Yes, I, I wrote it. I mean, it's accessible to children, but I really wrote it rather for the little dormant scientist in all of us because I think one of the things that we lose as we grow up is just the sheer delight in experimenting and exploring and learning new things about the world we get kind of set in our ways and we forget that science is really about discovering how the world works a lot of times we think of science as sort of a dry set of facts that are uh, set in stone Obviously, no scientist would say that. It's kind of the opposite of what it is. And um, children know this instinctually. Science is basically what they're using to figure out how the world works when they're constantly dropping their spoon on the floor. They're checking cause and effect and whether gravity works and <laughs> why do things not fly upwards. And then this is the kind of exploration that we we often lose sight of when, when we become adults though I think that artists are, are used to continuing to live in this world of exploration. So Science Fair was kind of made to reawaken that delight in exploring how the world works. But um, I, I also, this inspires me to say something that I was thinking about earlier when you were talking about the reawakening of science in this country, hopefully. Um, one 
of the things that I really like to convey about science, and I, I'm not entirely sure whether these excerpts do anything for this, but um, one of the things that I think is most important about the scientific worldview is that it helps you to change your mind when presented with new evidence. And in, in this moment when so many of us are um, are setting our minds for or against things and engaging in this very kind of tribalistic us versus them and we know we're right. I, I would challenge everybody to take a lesson from scientists and look around for what you might be wrong about. Even if you feel strongly about it, you might still be wrong about it, and, and it might be time to take on new evidence and make a new assessment of the world. One of the great examples of this that I think was very hard for a lot of people was discovering the, the mechanisms of the COVID virus, the novel coronavirus. The, for instance, we were told early on that masks would not protect us. And as the science came in, as people studied this using scientific methods, they realized that that was incorrect. And they changed the recommendations. And a lot of the public, I think, had trouble taking in that new information and changing their feelings about how the virus worked. So I, I don't know whether that's a, a, a coherent example or not, but um, it's hard. It's it's not very human. It's not very grown up to change your mind, but it's part of what science should be doing for us. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I think that's absolutely great. And I'm really glad that you pointed that out, particularly with, with COVID. And that's true in so many realms. Um, so that's, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'd like to move on because we have two more segments that are so fabulous. And um, this next one um, was written by your husband, uh, Matthew Shickley. And um, Matthew has himself an amazing career. He's comfortable across many genres. He's written chamber music, vocal music, songs, and electronic music for ensembles, bands, and the stage. And and he's also a great science lover. So um, some of his most popular work are based on texts or by historic or contemporary scientists, NASA or science journalists. And certainly he worked with you on this piece uh, for Science Fair. So um, this piece is the longest segment that we'll see um, at 13 minutes. It's the history of the universe. To scale. <laughs> Some people try to tell me that science will never answer the big questions we have in life. To them I say, baloney, every <laughs> <laughs> problem is your question aren't big Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's wonderful. The last note. <laughs> That's us. It, it is. It is. I, I would also, well, I hope it's, I hope we're not the last one, but who knows? Um, I would also like to point out, uh, I would like to apologize for several typos in the, the titles. I did those in great haste over the last day and a half. But also, I would like to point out that um, th this is a great example of, of corrective science. I had a lot of scientists come to the show, and I always invited them in the program to, if they heard anything that they felt was incorrect, to um, send me a correction, and we would try to correct the show for the next performance. And uh, uh, a biologist very kindly pointed out that we had accidentally, when we mentioned eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, that we had had the, the, wrong, the wrong images were wiggling when we said prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So in later performances, we, we corrected that. So the eukaryote wiggled when we said eukaryotic and the, and the prokaryote when we said prokaryotic. That's incredible. That's wonderful <laughs> to know. And it amazes me that you were even singing prokaryotic and eukaryotic. <laughs> it's just uh, an incredible uh, libretto there. It's and, just Latin. <laughs> yes. Uh, and well, Greek. <laughs> <laughs> well, all in all, I can certainly see why um, Science Fair and Opera with Experiments, the New York, New York, uh, New York Time Out called it pure effervescent pleasure. And I certainly agree. So um, I also um, want to bring uh, Renee back because um, I want to, and, and also um, here we, we do enjoy a second degree of relation. So I've had the pleasure of seeing you at here in Science Fair um, and in Philip Glass's groundbreaking four hour opera, Einstein on the Beach or four plus hour opera. And as Beauty in Glass's original opera written for the 1946 Jean Cocteau film. Um, and and it's wonderful performances. You've done um, so many things in your career. And you have this new project coming up. And tell us about this. I know Renee is also involved. Yes, indeed. It's called Astronautica, Voices of Women in Space. And it uses the words of women astronauts. Um, all NASA astronauts, and um, we, it is a, a show for my vocal trio, which is myself and a soprano and a contralto, and once again, we commissioned nine women composers to write songs for the trio on these texts, and Renee is one of them. That's wonderful. Now, this, this piece tonight is not Renee's tell Renee tell us a little bit about your involvement here so uh the first text I set was um by Mae Jemison and uh it really moved me you know when I think about how my art um can advocate for the environment I think it's mostly my expression of my love for the earth and my feeling that that nature tends towards healing, nature tends towards resilience, uh, although it is also fragile and beautiful. And uh, if I could just read the very end of Mae Jemison's text, would that be okay, Haiting? Uh, she says, when I was in space, I recognized as I looked down, the planet is gorgeous. It iridesces from within. And I recognized the moon, the stars, they're going to be here. The earth is going to be here, but we might not be. We get this all confused. The earth doesn't need us. We need earth. Um, so that speaks to my heart. And I think performance has a ritualistic aspect to it. It creates a space in which we have the ability to experience heightened emotions, insight, and the possibility for change in our thinking, the possibility for transformation. Uh, and so I, this, this work really gives us the opportunity to celebrate Earth uh, and also be inspired through our love of Earth to take right action. And so I hope, I hope the music in my piece and in, in others um, 
creates that inspiration in the listeners. Thank, Thank you. you, Renee. That's so beautiful. The only reason we're not playing Renee's piece tonight is because we've had to create this content in quarantine, and um, we have only managed a couple of pieces so far. So um, the one that we're about to play is by Kamala Sankaram, and um, you will see the credit for the astronaut in the video. Here we go. Thank you. a very special feeling, uh, a dome of a dark sky and stars everywhere and the earth uh, last time covered with thunderstorms here and there with uh, some small sprays of lightning and every once in a while city lights peek through the clouds and it uh, is very much like a storybook.
it really belongs to all of us. I can't think of a more perfect way to end this show with a, I want to say a very, very special thank you to you, Haiting Chin and Renee Favancy for tonight's featured presentation of Science Fair and this uh, preview um, from um, the, the first view that we just saw. Um, the Science Fair and Opera with Experiments, an opera lover's love song to science through which we may all enjoy the wonder and beauty of science, our mother earth and ourselves as we band together in this in space on this pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan called our view of the earth from space. Look for Solar Arts Heal shows and more on this website posted in the chat and in our Mars Stream YouTube platform. And next week, in celebration of Thanksgiving week and indigenous peoples of the Americas, we'll be joined by Leland Faulkner in his show, Walker Between Worlds bringing traditional Native American tales and legends to life with the simple magic of unforgettable characters like the trickster coyote and the magical web weaving of grandmother spider. These creative tales of wonder and entertaining lessons from the first Americans are a gift and legacy to future generations. Native American Leland Faulkner shares stories from this stage show and in conversation about indigenous American tradition, practices, strides, and frictions. Again, thank you to Hai Ting Chin, Renee Favancy, Marstream producers Kristen, Brianna, and to artistic director Stephanie Wiseman, to our Zoom and YouTube audiences. Um, we'll see you for upcoming shows on the Marstream and at marsh.org. Stephanie? Wow, what a wonderful show. Thank you so much, Hai Ting and Renee. Amazing. So was that actually the astronaut in the astronaut thing at the end? Yes, that is Kalpana Chawla, who was the first Indian American woman in space and who tragically died in the Columbia accident. Oh dear. <laughs> but you, she's, well, she lives on in her capture in this. So thank you for uh, putting this forward. This off She was wonderfully eloquent, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Well, I can't, I hope maybe I, I saw in the chat somebody wanted to see the whole thing. I don't know if it's possible, if you might like to show the whole thing. You don't have to say anything right now, but let's talk about it. And uh, we'll look forward to more of the astronaut thing. So thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you so much for having us. So onward ho, I hope you all come back to my show where there's another Faulkner. We have two Faulkners in the same week. One's the ED of National Writing Novel Month, and the other one is Solo Arts Heal next week's show. So join me tomorrow night. Join us for all our shows. Make a tip. Keep us doing this great work. Thank you all so much. See you all soon. Bye. Woohoo!